assalamu alaikum hello students today we have to solve problem number 2.9 of electrodynamics fourth edition by david j griffiths in this problem we have been given electric field vector and spherical polar coordinates and we have been asked to find the charge density rho and total charge enclosed by that sphere having radius r radius capital r so let's see how can we find these two quantities for the first quantity we can easily use gauss's law in differential form and what was the differential form of gauss's law that was divergence of electric field vector was equal to volume charge density divided by epsilon naught and uh, in order to find this quantity rho we can separate and we can write rho equal to epsilon naught into del dot e now to find this quantity rho we will need the divergence of electric field vector and the value of electric field vector have been given now we can easily find its divergence and then put the value here to get our required quantity but remember that this electric field vector have been given in spherical polar coordinates so we should know the formula of the divergence of any general vector in spherical polar coordinates and if you remember you derived that formula in vector analysis and that formula for any general vector a came out to be like this in this formula this ar a theta and a phi are the components of that general vector in spherical polar coordinates but here we want to find the divergence of uh, vector e particularly so uh, this a will be replaced by vector e so del dot a will be replaced by del dot e and these components a r a theta and a phi will be replaced by e r e theta e phi that means these are the components of vector e in spherical polar coordinates but if you see your given expression carefully you will observe that your electric field vector is only along r component the rest of the two components uh, the other two angular components e theta and e phi have not been given here that means both of both of those two components are zero so if i use uh, if i modify this expression for my given vector e it will be something like this del dot e will be equal to del dot e will be equal to 1 by r square partial by partial r and r square e r e r while the other two components are zero so their partial derivatives will also be zero okay now let me put here the value of my r component and definitely this original vector is only along r direction only along radial direction that's why it is radial component of itself okay uh, so it becomes 1 by r square partial by partial r r square and the radial component what is the radial component the vector itself is actually a radial component so i can put here the value k r cube okay k r cube this r cap is just a unit vector so you will not write here r cap now it becomes something like 1 by r square and it is 2 uh, not 2 sorry partial by partial r partial by partial r n to k r power 5 and by taking partial derivative you are well aware it becomes like 5 k r power 4 and after simplification it simply becomes 5 k r square so this is divergence of our given vector now by putting the value of del dot e into equation number 1 i can find my required quantity so put 2 in 1 put equation 2 in equation 
so equation one becomes rho into epsilon naught five k r square or simply five k epsilon naught r square so this is our first required quantity now let's find the second quantity but remember here you cannot replace this k you cannot replace this k by 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught because this is not the coulomb's constant you can see in the statement of the problem that this k is any constant it has not been told that it is the coulomb constant so you cannot replace this k by 1 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught that will be a mistake okay now let's find our second quantity okay now we have to find the total charge enclosed by that sphere this is our sphere and we have to find the charge enclosed by it how can we do that for that purpose we will be using the formula of charge density and according to that formula the charge density rho is equal to total charge enclosed per unit volume and if we separate the value of q here it becomes q equal to rho into v and if we convert this expression into integral form then the total charge enclosed will be equal to rho into dv so this is the equation we will be using here to find our total charge enclosed so q equal to rho into dv rho we have just calculated its value that is 5 k epsilon naught into r square what what is what is dv here dv is actually the volume of our charge element but what will be our charge element here in this case we have divided our complete sphere into concentric shell and one of those shells is our charge element so we will require its volume so the volume of our charge element that means the volume of our uh, 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 volume of our shell will be equal to the product of its area and its thickness what will be the area of that elementary shell that area will be equal to 4 pi multiply square of its radius but what will be its radius its, its radius is denoted by small r here this is our one of those shells and its radius is taken as small r but the question arises why uh, how did i take uh, its uh, radius by sm uh, as small r because uh, the expression we have been given in the problem this expression contains small r and this small r is actually the distance of our required point from the center of the sphere that's why we can take our elementary shell we we can take the radius of our elementary shell as small r okay hope it's clear now what will be our volume what will be the volume of our elementary shell that volume will be equal to the product of its area the product of its area multiplied by its thickness and its thickness is taken as dr okay its thickness will be equal to dr means change in radius now we can easily solve this integral so first of all let me uh, write constants out of the integral 5k epsilon naught sorry no it, it becomes 20k 20k because four, 5 fours are 20 20k epsilon naught into pi and inside the integral it becomes just r power 4 into dr and by simplifying this integral it becomes 20k epsilon naught pi and it becomes r power 5 divided by 5 but we should also we should also write here the limits of integration what will be the limits of integration it's pretty clear that uh, that the minimum size of our shell the minimum size of our shell can be of zero radius so the lower limit will be zero and what will be the upper limit our greatest shell can be the size of this sphere so its radius will be equal to radius of sphere capital R so I have to write here the limits of integration and, and becomes uh, 520 it becomes 4 k epsilon naught pi r power 5 
this is our total charge enclosed by that sphere hope it's clear in the next lecture we will discuss problem number 2.10 goodbye